shad tubes, minnow tubes, soft plastic grubs. Get serious about trout and landlocked king trolling with serious soft plastics from the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. This is my latest passion. This is a 40 pound recurve bow and uh, I like to think I can shoot anything. Rifle, shotgun, pistol, I'm an excellent shot with a compound bow, but uh, this thing is driving me crazy. I can shoot it, but uh, it is a lot like golf. You gotta do everything right if you wanna even get close to having any kind of consistency at all. Um, I am working working on it. I will hunt with it when I, when I get it dialed in. Um, but in the meantime, it is time for a Northern California fishing report. And you know, I'm kind of squeezing this in between chores, a little archery practice, and I gotta go cook dinner. Um, a lot is going on right now. Um, if, if we wanna talk about you know, trout fishing, we'll lead with trout fishing. Inconsistency is the word. Shasta, fish are scattered, very inconsistent. You can catch fish from the surface to 80 feet deep. They're all over the lake. The thermocline is broken um, and the fish, they're just plain out scattered. Elmanor, same thing. Plentiful, you know, plentiful bait, lots of pond smelt, the fish are scattered, and even when you find them, you gotta work hard for the strikes. Now, at both Shasta and Elmanor, there are some very nice fish up for grabs. At Shasta, the rainbows are topping out at about four pounds. Two to three pound fish are common, when you can get them to go. At Elmanor, the, the quality is even better. Three pound fish is about average. Uh, the rainbows range up to six. Uh, browns are running even larger. But again, you're fishing, if you're the average guy, you're probably fishing for two, three, four strikes a day at best. Now, Brian Ricucci, he's doing better than that, Big Daddy's Guide Service. He's the best, he's the best stick on the lake. Um, so, quality, yes. Consistency, no. Um, Eagle Lake, that's our other premier trout fishery. Kind of the same deal. The fish have lockjaw. The fish that are being caught, they're very nice. Three pound rainbows, they fight hard, but uh, there's no consistent pattern. There's no consistent lure that's producing. Orange is a great color. Orange flies are working, spoons are working. But again, it's one of those deals where you gotta put the time in, you gotta cover a lot of water. We're coming off a full moon phase, which is never good for trout fishing. I had two trout trips this week. Um, the first one, or this, this past week, the first one was to Jackson Meadows and we ended up with nine fish, but it was, you know, due to the full moon, it was an early morning deal. We had fish up to 24 inches, we had 24 inch 24, 25 inch cutthroat, we didn't measure it. Nice fish, we had a three pound rainbow. But uh, all that action, all nine fish, came in about a 90 minute span of time as soon as we hit the water. And once the bite shut down, it got very difficult. I was able to get one more fish on a worm. And if I'd have kept grinding with worms, I probably would have kept catching fish. We were catching small rainbows on the worms. So we opted to, to pack up, the smoke was coming in, get going. Two days later, I was at French Meadows and, and the scene was much the same. Um, right out of the gate in the morning, I got four rainbows. Um, top one was probably 16, 17 inch type of fish. They were all holdovers. I, I think the, the larger one was probably a holdover from last year, but the other three were smaller and they, they'd clearly been planted in the spring. They were residing in the lake. They were you know, eating the available food and uh, I, I let them all go. And I'm confident that those fish are gonna show up again later in the fall. Hopefully they survive the winter. They'll show up in the spring and they're gonna be in that 15 to 16 inch range. But, you know, it wasn't easy. It was a short duration bite. After that, things got very slim. There was some bug activity. There were some fish on the surface, primarily small rainbows. And uh, it, just, it just wasn't happening, you know, in a major way. And uh, Gina was with me that day. And, and again, by 11 o'clock, it was getting hot. It was getting uncomfortable. And uh, we were ready to hit the road. And that's kind of been the deal. But there is a bright spot in all this. Of course, the deeper we get into fall, the better the fishing's gonna get. And uh, we have some rain in the forecast, a little bit of rain, but we also have about a 20 degree temperature drop kind of across the board. Um, initially, that should slow things down even more. Temperature drops are never good, no matter what you're fishing for. But I think in the wake of that, the moon is, the moon is getting smaller. 
um, the water temperature is definitely going to continue to cool off and I think that this storm is really going to start to spark things. I think this is really going to kick off what we really consider fall fishing. Um, in the delta, the striper fishing, it's good one day, it's poor the next. Again, inconsistent, inconsistent, inconsistent. I've heard of fish up to 22 pounds being caught this week, but uh, you know, it's not a slam dunk. Trollers are doing better than the bait guys because they can stay on the move. If you're a bait guy, you're gonna deal with a lot of bait stealing kind of action. It's kind of a bummer. But uh, again, that that is in transition. This is this upcoming weekend is when traditionally we would have the Rio Vista Striper Derby and that kind of kicks off striper fishing in the Delta. Cooler temperatures is gonna do nothing but improve things out there. There's a lot of fish in the system. They just kinda gotta get on the same page, start kinda holding in some you know, identifiable areas, and then we're gonna have very good fishing. I've said it before, there's a lot of bonus stripers in the, in the system. A lot of fish weren't caught last fall due to weeds. A lot of fish this spring weren't caught due to the COVID pandemic. So there's a lot of fish in the system that might've been caught in other years that weren't caught this year. So there's a lot of fish out there. We just got to get them to go. Salmon fishing. Again, I'm going to say it again, inconsistent action. There are some very big, beautiful chromers in you know, the Sacramento River system at this time. And they're catching them all the way down, you know, from, from Benicia all the way up to Red Bluff. The water's warm. The fish are blowing right up the river. If you want salmon, you're gonna have to get out there. You're gonna have to grind. You're gonna have to make the most of your opportunities. I had one guy tell me, you know, one of the top guides in the state actually tell, told me, I live and die on each strike because he said, he knows you're only gonna get a limited strike. If you miss one, man, that's a gut punch because you're only gonna get two, three, four strikes a day, maybe, you got to turn those into fish in the net. But is salmon fishing productive? Yes, it's, it's disappointing because it's not the salmon fishing we've had in years past, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But if you want to get out there, you want to catch a 15 to 30 pound king, maybe something even bigger than that. They are in the system. They're out there. You're going to have to commit to it. You're going to have to put in your time. You're going to have to work for them. But those fish are in the system now, and they're going to continue to trickle through, you know, all the way until till December, likely. And we'll probably have some a little bit better fishing as the fall goes on if we get those cool water temperatures. But as you know, if you're a California salmon fisherman, there are no guarantees. The salmon are biting when you've got one at the end of your line, and you've had a successful day when you get one in your net. That's the bottom line. If you want a salmon, get out there, put in the work, and get after them. If you know how to sturgeon fish in deep water and you can deal with the wind, the sturgeon bite in the West Delta is pretty good. Pressure is extremely light. Number one bait, no surprises here, row. Number two bait, no surprises there, eel. Also picking up some nice stripers on the eel. Um, it's a pretty good bite. You got to deal with those westerly winds and you got to be able to hook the fish in deep water. I'm talking, you know, anywhere from 40 to 60 feet deep. They're in those deep holes. They're enjoying the cool water in those holes. And uh, if you're adept at, at fishing that deep for sturgeon, you can absolutely go out there and fill a tag. If you haven't filled your tags or you want to fill a tag, this is the time to do it. Those tags are going to expire soon. We, we don't have that much time left. So sturgeon fishing, I'd rate it as good overall for the guys that know what they're doing. Striper fishing, fair and building. Trout fishing, we're kind of in that pregnant pause between summer and fall when things kind of fragment and blow all over. And, uh, you know, you got to put in your time. You got to put in your work. But there are some nice fish up for grabs. And I think in two weeks, it's going to be a very different story, depending on the temperature and the conditions. I would love to see another set of storms come in after this and really cool things off. The cooler it gets, the better the fishing is going to be and that can you know that goes for anywhere from the delta all the way up to the high mountains and all that and remember as it gets cold in the mountains that bite is going to you know you're going to be able to trace that bite right down the the elevation of, of the mountains into the foothills 
trout plants are scheduled to start at Collins Lake on October 15th. That's what I'm going to be doing this week. I got to take the guide boat over to Collins. We're getting all the paperwork finalized. is isn't finalized yet. But uh, our guide boat is going to be living at Collins Lake here for the next two to three months. Um, we're going to get it in place. We're going to get dialed in. And uh, I will give you the heads up when I am ready to hit the water and start guiding. But uh, it is a great sign that, that fish plants are slated to start at Collins on October 15th. And uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun over there this fall. Um, let's wrap things up with saltwater. Lincoln action. Close to Wide Ohm, very good fishing if you want to go out in a charter boat or if you have your own boat. Um, those, those big lings, they move out of deep water towards the shallows in the fall. They're getting ready to spawn and uh, they are on the chomp. Inside the bay, halibut fishing is still good to very good depending on the day, depending on the tide. Still plenty of fish out there. You just got to go get after them. Um, striper fishing in the bay, it's a day-to-day -day deal, but uh, I saw the happy hooker had 10 or 12 fish the other day. Nice keeper stripers. So the, the opportunity is there. If you, if you still want to get out and do some live bait potluck fishing inside the bay, um, the fishing is very good. I actually saw a, I think it was a 43-pound soup fin caught by one of the... Uh, live bait guys on the hooker the other day so nice big fish those things are great to eat by the way so a lot of fun going on out there there are still some salmon trickling in this is the time of the year when you can get those big 40 plus pound trophies outside the golden gate strikes few and far between but if you go out there and you grind off Muir Beach or somewhere like that where those big fish like to stage even at California City on an incoming tide as long as you got your bait in the water you got a chance to go big and uh, everybody wants to go big when it comes to salmon fishing for me the guiding the the trout fishing and hunting season it's going to consume a lot of my time i have two deer tags i have a bear tag i have an archery only tag if i can get this thing shooting where i'm looking um but you know long story short same old story every fall there's more to do than you have time for so you kind of got to kind of got to chew, pick and choose what you want to do and the, the duck guys they even have it worse than me you know they've got to choose between you know fishing and big game hunting and duck hunting it all kind of happens at once and the way the weather pattern's been in northern california we kind of go from from summer right into a winter pattern and we're not getting a whole lot of fall so you got to make hay while the sun shines you got to get out there and and get your sport on while the conditions are right and we are just moving into the proper conditions for hunting fishing and all that kind of stuff i'll be out looking for something here when we get this rain i'll be out looking for a deer or a bear or both and uh, i'll have lucy at my side um, the area i really want to hunt is currently closed so i'm just going to be out there in the national forest i'm going to burn a lot of boot leather um, lucy and i are going to get some exercise and maybe we'll come across something nice you never know anyway i'm kel kellogg that's kind of the fishing scene right now inconsistency rules but improvement is on the way and uh, I'll be right back here on YouTube soon, hopefully with a big buck or a big bear or a big trout or something like that. Anyhow, I will catch you guys later if you're looking for tackle, if you want to gear up for the fall, if you want lead core rods or, you know, trolling fly spoons, whatever, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. I am committed to mastering this, this frustrating piece of equipment. So I'm going to get back to shooting. My wife is on the way home. So I got probably enough time to shoot a dozen arrows. And uh, then it is time to cook dinner. I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for all the support. I'm signing off. I will catch you later.